Hey guys, it's me, Cubix. Once in a blue moon, I actually come up with an idea I'm genuinely proud of. Today we're going to be solving a Rubik's Cube with no hands. Well, technically I'll be moving my hands, but I won't be touching anything that's physically connected to the cube. Okay, even that's not totally true because I'm using a virtual cube, but I am not directly making contact. Whatever, just watch the video. Now I first had this idea because I was sitting down Now, I first had this idea when I was sitting down just cubing, realizing that I wish I was also working out while doing cubing. So I looked around my desk to see if there was anything I could do to increase my physical activity, and I saw a webcam. So I wrote some code that essentially uses a webcam to track my hand gestures, and depending on where my hands are on the screen, it makes a certain move on the cube. Needless to say, this is still all on a virtual cube because I don't actually have a cube solving robot. If I did, you could very well put in a physical cube and just turn the robot. The code is kind of dense and it's fairly boring, so I, I'm not gonna go into it too much. Conceptually, what's happening is that the webcam is just taking images constantly, and what the code is doing is finding differences in the images. For example, right now, as I'm sitting here, the background is static, but I am moving. So if so for some reason, I'm now over here. You can see that the background hasn't changed, but I've changed locations. So what the code does is it compares those two images and then it sees which pixels are different and then it highlights those pixels. This is of course the very, very basics. There's also other things you can do. For example, you can apply different color masks. So for example, if I don't wanna track anything that's white, I can just blur all of that out. I could also filter colors that I want and just ignore everything else. For example, if I wanted that maroon sweatshirt that's on the counter there, I could just set the RGB values to mask that in and then take everything else out. Now, all of this sounds really fancy, but it's actually not that hard to code. It's just a lot to understand. The main package I used for this was called OpenCV. It's this massive package that's used in thousands and thousands of projects all around the world. It's been used for academic research, for industry research, and for stupid passion projects like mine. There's a lot going on in this code, so I don't want to go through every single line. But one of the things that I did was create a mask with some lower bound and upper bound. And OpenCV actually does things instead of RGB, it does BGR. So these are the blue values, green values, and red values. In this case, I'm just keying out everything that's going to be very dark. Otherwise, all the code does is, again, find the differences between the frames, create some sort of threshold using that mask, and then displays the centroids of the items that are still remaining. This disgusting block of if statements is just all the moves that I actually ended up using. For those of you who are familiar with coding, you'll know that this is a really bad way of doing it. What I could have done is just use a hash map. Uh, it would have made it a lot easier, but I was kind of debugging uh, while I was going, so that's why there's a lot of commented out print statements as well as a huge block of if statements. And then here, this is just some helper function that actually makes the move and gives the input to the keyboard. Again, I could have used some sort of hash map so that I don't have a block of if statements, but and so if you run the code, you see that we get this color frame, and this is essentially the feed that's being fed into the program. And depending on where your hands are, there's going to be things that are marked, which I'll show you in a second. Each of these boxes, this is just a visualization for myself so that when I was debugging, I could tell what was going on. But essentially this middle box is where my hands want to be when I don't want to make a move. If I want to make a move, I'll move my hands to either of the four boxes in the periphery. And if I have two hands in these boxes, then it makes a cube rotation. So I needed a way to easily track my hands. So as you can see right now, can't see it because I didn't threshold these colors. Uh, so these hands mean nothing. So if I hide my hands with these GAN bags that I had lying around, uh, now you can see that things are thresholded and it's actually tracking the GAN bags pretty well actually. So of course, uh, the way that this works is I, I need more space to move around. So I'm gonna scoop back. And hopefully now the idea is pretty clear. So if my two hands are here, nothing happens. If I move my hand up here, that registers as, uh, in this case, an R. This is going to be an L prime, L, R prime, U, U prime. And then these are cube rotations. Uh, yeah, so it looks silly, but it, it works. I, I suppose it's only fair now that I actually demonstrate a solve. Uh, as you can see, I, I have quite a few DNFs because I was doing a lot of debugging, and the one solve I did took three minutes. Uh, it was actually very tiring. Oh, these are not good cases. Uh, oh, it's, my microphone's in the way. Okay, so... Yeah, let's do... Oh, that was the wrong direction.
to it. Oh my god, this is not a bad solve either. Seventy moves, sub two. I don't want to do this again. I, I tried this again, but I don't think I'm gonna get sub one. And also, my arms are kind of tired. But anyway, it works, and it's kind of fun. So that's it for this video. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with it. I think it's really fun. I'm gonna have the code on GitHub, so just check the description for the link. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it, please do subscribe. Also, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the people supporting me on Patreon. Without their support, none of these videos would really be possible. So thank you to everyone who has supported me either on my Twitch streams or through Patreon. Uh, your help has not gone unnoticed and it's made this channel into what it is today. Until next time, toodles. <laughs> All the pieces feel the same, don't they?